The Guy, Shannon and Clint podcast. Hello. Tolo for lava, people of the world, and welcome along to the Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast, the last one for the week, the fifth one of the week, the uh, fifth in total, and the one we do before we go on the weekend. Yay! <laughs> That's what you call mailing in an intro. Um, <laughs> Mail- while you've che- mailing in. While you've checked out for the weekend, I'm on the top of my game, still spitting hot radio jams for everyone to enjoy. Like welcome what? along to the show, guys. Thanks for coming. My name's Guy. And I hope you enjoy this fantastic podcast that we put on for you today. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. If you haven't heard the news already, Bieber has been in trouble. Big trouble. You probably have heard about it because it's pretty much the biggest thing that's happened ever. (laughs) I hate when people come on Twitter and they say things like, oh, there's bigger things coming on the world. Why are we all talking about Justin Bieber when there's there's other things happening in the world that are more important than that and Obama and the politics? And No, this is the biggest thing that's happened <laughs> ever. Let's focus on it. I've given up my whole day to writing terrible jokes for it. Oh, okay. I bet you have. Because Justin Bieber this morning, if you missed it, was arrested. He had a DUI. He was driving under the influence of marijuana, alcohol, and also prescription meds. Dang, also, the big three. Also, he and proactive. got arrested. <laughs> uh, if you look at his mugshot, He's not using his ProAct. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, he was also arrested for resisting arrest without um, using physical force, though. Yeah. And um, more just words. And also for drag racing. So he has been locked up. He was in jail for 10 hours before he was released. There's already some classic gags on the internet. You've seen the people pointing around the drag racing gag, and it's his mugshot, but he's dressed and he's got woman's makeup on, like okay. drag. <laughs> That's a classic one. Yeah. My favorite one is the before uh, no makeup with makeup comparison to Miley Cyrus. He oh. looks he looks r- remarkably like Miley Cyrus in his mugshot. <laughs> and he's like smiling. If you haven't seen it, you can see it on our Facebook page. Just look up the Edge Afternoons with Guy, Sharon and Clint. I love that photo we've got on our Facebook page and it's a believer and she's real gutted because she's like, oh, Bieber looks better in my mugshot <laughs> in his mugshot than he did in his photo with me. It's yeah, so yeah. good. He's real Aww. sad in the photo with her and real happy in his mugshot. But we want to know what you think would be the best punishment for Justin Bieber. And we're not talking about jail. Let's get a little bit silly sausage on it. You can call us on 0800 The Edge or text us to 3343. I personally would like to lock him in a room, tie him to a chair, and make him listen to his own music for 24 <laughs> hours. Can we also think of a punishment for Sharon for saying silly sausage? Silly sausage! <laughs> I love that saying. Silly, You're a silly sausage. Let's get a silly sausage I, on it. I, I, I silly sausage, guys. I genuinely like Bieber's music, but it would be pretty funny just to have Bieber, Bieber a baby, baby, baby going on his earphones for, for oh, non-stop. Oh, kind of like a Justin Bieber version of Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> <laughs> I would Basically. uppercut myself if I got put into that situation. Yeah. I thought his balls had dropped. Why is his voice still real high? I, was, I like his music. I was genuinely really impressed that he had a Lamborghini, by the way. It's cool. a nice car, but he's Justin Bieber. Why are you surprised by that? I don't know. What would you guys do if you got to punish him? People are already calling in. I want to feel. Oh, I, oh, for me, I would um, just give him a good. He just needs a good spanking. We've got a, a spanking. That, that, I just realised that sounded really bad, but he just <laughs> needs his mum or someone to just discipline him, old yeah. school style. The thing that annoys me about this also, and this may help you come up with a better punishment, is that Justin Bieber right now has just been photographed five minutes ago, already back on the beers. Uh, actually, actually, there's. I'm looking at the photograph right now. He's been photographed drinking beers with his oh. mates out the back. It's it's a photo taken like over a rail. So he's trying to be private, but he's clearly learned his lesson. I feel sorry for his fans who love him so much, and they just want to support him. They want him to do well, and he keeps on letting them down. What happened to this, eh? So you know what happened to that? What? Puberty. Yeah, true. <laughs> That's what happened. But we want to know your punishments for Justin Bieber. Lynn, what would yours be? Hello. I would take him to the emergency ward at the hospital to see, show him a uh, drink driving accident. Very good him. point. And, and and get them get you know tell the families of these victims to talk to Bieber. There you go. And that's just, that is actually oh, a boy. that's a sensible uh, sensible suggestion. sausage. Thank you so much for that sensible sausage suggestion, <laughs> Lynn. <laughs> On our hundred the edge, we've got Louise. What's your hey. punishment? Hey, Louise. Hi. Um, I definitely think the best punishment would to get the Biebs to listen to his own music. Yeah. 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 That, I totally agree with you on that one as well. What do you think would be the worst Justin Bieber song to hear over and over <laughs> and over and over? Oh, oh God. There's, there's just so many to choose from. Not yeah, this one. I'd have one. to say Boyfriend. Boyfriend oh, okay. is, oh, is yeah. It's a classic track. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, anyone that tries to be Justin Timberlake should also be pun- be punished. Thank you so much, Louise. Oh, 100 The Edge. Alex, what would your punishment be? Um, I reckon he should live with a poor family for like a year under a fake name and disguise. So like he can't rely on his rep to 
um, pavers away for him. Oh, very good point. Again, oh. again, very, very sensible sausage as well. Yeah, that, that is a good one though, because then you have to earn respect like the normal way instead of just by throwing his money around. <laughs> That's Thank what you. they do in movies. So, <laughs> <laughs> and what, movies what are movie, real, Alex. What movie did that happen in? <laughs> um. Actually, I think it might have been a book. Um, <laughs> oh, it's it's good, so- it sounds good anyway, yeah, Alex. You thanks, should write mate. a script for it. You can make some money. Kelly, what is your punishment for Justin Bieber? Punishment for Justin Bieber? He should go to Hamilton with Guy Williams. That's punishment. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very good, Cole. I, I tell you, I'd love to go to Hamilton with Bieber. Me and him would tear up Hamilton. I think he wouldn't want to go to Hamilton with you. <laughs> oh, what's, what, why not? What do you think would be the most annoying thing that Guy did? Oh, he talks. He's depressing. He's horrible. <laughs> Hang on, are you talking about Guy or Justin Bieber? Both. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Kelly. That, oh, that's a bit hey, harsh. So, hey, Kelly, sorry to make you depressed, mate. Yeah. I'm trying my, I'm trying my best. I don't mean to make you all sad. <laughs> what should I do in the future to change? Not talk about Hamilton. Oh, uh, okay. Are you, <laughs> I don't are you talk re- about Hamilton that much. You actually like it. <laughs> oh, I really like Hamilton. I'm a big fan. All right. Yeah, I, I lived there for three months and, and couldn't get away fast enough. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for your call this afternoon, Kelly, and um, I'll hold you in the song. Great punishments coming in through the text machine. Uh, Strap him to a chair, blindfold him, then give scissors to three sugar filled fi- three sugar filled four year olds, and make them cut his hair. Oh! Lock him in a room with guy singing. I'm a good singer. What are you talking about? Better still, lock him in a room with guy. <laughs> good call. <laughs> Put on an island, set it on fire. If he swims away and he gets eaten by sharks, and then he gets eaten by sharks. Oh, yeah. Justin Bieber should have to sell his Lamborghini and give all the money to charity. That's a good one. Um, and then everyone else is saying death penalty, which I think is a bit much. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little heavy. It's a little heavy. <laughs> okay, everybody is hating on the Biebs today. If you want to read all the info that's been going on with him, it's up on the edge.co.nz. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. Edge. Chang's in the studio with us. Welcome, Chang. <laughs> hello, hello. Well, oh, Why okay. am I the only one clapping for him? No one else comes to the clap. Welcome, Chang. Because he was just sitting right behind that window. Yeah, because this I'm week... I'm always here. We've, we've seen Chang since like 11 o'clock. Yeah. This week, um, Chang... Uh, has put together our kind of best of the week type compilation. I've decided to call it the uh, cream of the crap. Yes, we had to rename it because we blatantly stole this idea of JJ Mike and Dom's producer's diary because it just gives us a couple of less things to do on a so, Friday. So it's not really a highlight, it's more crap on the show. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the cream Whoa. of the crap. Chang, you, I feel like you, you're not qu- completely behind this name, cream of the crap. Yeah, because I, why are you calling it crap? You don't, you don't understand. No, it's the cream of the crap. It's the, of all the crap we've done this week, this is the, the cream. cream. This is the creamiest. This is the good... <laughs> Have you it's, not heard? it's the good stuff. But you know, Cheng, mm. you know where the saying... The, you know the saying we're ripping off, right? I don't really know. <laughs> Remember, you, I'm Asian. Are you familiar with it? <laughs> Cheng, you, you can't just say... Cream on the top. I'm Asian no, after no. everything no. you can't do. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, no, not cream on the top. Not cream you, on the top? Do you, know the, do you know the term cream of the crop? No. No? Okay. <laughs> it's because you know how they grow cream. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, Chang, we'll have to talk about this a bit more later. We could, Ch- this is the funniest thing Chang has ever heard. I like her. <laughs> Chang. He actually believed that. <laughs> he got off his, he, Chang, to have a laugh there, Chang got off his chair and stood up. Chang, you put together our best bits of the week. Is it, yeah. is it, is it a good package? Well, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry can't stick it off the thing. <laughs> Just, this, is, this, is Chang, this is Chang's initial cream of the crap, everybody. Guy Sharon and Clint's cream of the crap. Hi there, guys. Chang here, producer for Guy Sharon and Clint. And here are the best bits for Guy Sharon and Clint's first week on the show. They caught up with singer Aloe Blatt, and Clint kind of got himself into a bit of a trouble. I actually discovered you through the television show How to Make It in America. Yeah, which wasn't available in New Zealand, because I don't think it was syndicated. How'd you get it? Well, I, I, um, oh, I just, uh, a friend sent me a, a, a legally purchased DVD copy that <laughs> uh, once it went to DVD he sent me both seasons all TV is free on the internet fly. There was a 6.2 magnitude earthquake during our show on Monday afternoon, and there was photos circulating online of the eagle from the Hobbit movie in Wellington Airport that has fallen down. Guy said before we went on air that he thinks the eagle came down to get a butter chicken and naan combo. <laughs> and someone on the show admitted she has a problem. So cholera addiction is a real thing. I honestly mean it when I say I cannot go three days without it. In Australia at the moment, there are some lawyers preparing to take a whole lot of different cola companies to court. <laughs> Would you be willing to testify? No, because I love it so much. I, I wouldn't want to do anything bad that might make it not exist anymore. It's times like this where I'm like, God, I'm glad I'm not into crack. <laughs> I would not really get off it. During the week.
week, we also caught up with a guy who won $100,000 at the cricket. What are you going to spend your $100,000 on? Yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's a million-dollar question, I guess. That's what everyone's asking me. And, um, well, it's yeah, a $100,000 well, question. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess you're going to be technical about it. Yeah. <laughs> also during the week, we've got a couple of smart-ass callers. It was like a side street. I'm in Timaru, and there's like a heap of side streets coming off the main road. People in Timaru are always bragging about all their side streets. Shut up. Um, <laughs> and so, I'm actually working at Skyline Skies Rotorua. Oh, shut up. I used um, to work there. I used to be a luge boy. What do you do there? What was that? Back when they only had one track or something? <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Ooh, the belt. No, I apologise. <laughs> and that was Sky Show and Clint's Cream of the Crap. If you missed anything on our show this week, you can catch it on our website, theedge.co.nz, or subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. We'll catch you all next week. Edge. Weed story online today. Have you seen that one that's floating around Facebook today about the rat ship? <laughs> Because I thought I've heard people talking about the rap the rat shit. <laughs> but I thought people would like trying to be street and slang saying ratchet, like Miley Cyrus is being ratchet again. I thought that's no, no, what no. people were talking about. No, no, no. Do you know about this guy? Let's talk rat shit, bro, because I've heard about it. So there's a ship which is floating around in the ocean at the moment. Yeah. And it's a former Soviet era cruise ship. Ooh. Um and for the last two years, it's been floating around in the ocean because no one wants to take um, ownership for it. The Canadians just pushed it out to sea and let it go because it was um, it was claimed and there was something wrong with it and it was toxic. And there's no one on board it except for rats. And now, this ship has just been floating around in the ocean for two years and the rats have been eating whatever's left. Now, because there's no constant food source, the rats have turned cannibalistic. <laughs> so they're rat-eating rats... And this ship, which the Canadians pushed out, is now just floating around in the ocean, and it's um, due to make ground and crash into the coast of Ireland or the UK. The British and, coast. Yeah, yeah. And um, all these cannibalistic rats are going to run onto the shore. <laughs> it's a genuine fear. I think it's kind of cute. I like to imagine the rats are out on the ship wearing little ship costumes. And <laughs> with little hats. Yeah, with little hats, and they've kind of got a kind of a, a, a strategy of um, like how the ship's put together. And what, what, what are you going to say? And they're all sweeping the deck singing... Um, in the navy, Except for the bit where they're not doing that, and they're eating each other's flesh, <laughs> and they're so starved for food that the minute this ship makes grounds, these rats are going to spill into the UK, the home of the plague. I might add. Here comes a ship full of cannibal rats. They just need to send a ship full of um, stray cats out to, <laughs> <laughs> to capture the rats. Oh, and they could dress up as pirates and they can sing a pirate song. <laughs> oh, that would be that would be so cute. And we're like, meow. When people tweet and they go, they go, oh, Beaver, stop talking about Beaver. There's more important things co- happening in the world. What they mean is the more important things is the rat ship. Yeah, and I've got it covered. <laughs> Thanks for covering that, Clint. I've done extensive research on the rat ship today. <laughs> um, do you know what? It's, it fascinates I, me. I, I just it's googled it. I just googled it, and I loved the way you told the story because you've told the story like Chinese whispers, and you've embellished a lot of facts. I didn't in embellish the story. anything. Hey, the um, bit about the the rats dressing up as pirates and sweeping the deck is not is not true. No, because oh, they would use up as sailors, not pirates. We added that, but yeah, okay. That, that's that's true. That's true. That's a, that's a what real bits thing. aren't true? Um, it's only been out there for a year. And no, it was floated in 2012. It has been out there. According to the news, it has only been out there for about oh, a year. Oh, mate, do I come in here and fact check and, scandal? And, 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 and. The do reason, I come in here and search out whether your story about Lindsay is, Lohan's real or not? The reason <laughs> it's in there is because uh, a Canadian millionaire was embroiled in a debt scandal, so he just decided to leave it there. Blah, blah, blah. It's floating around, it's full but of deadly rats. I really rats. liked the bit about the rat of <laughs> <laughs> rats. Because <laughs> they're all like splinter on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You try and bring one story to the show, and this is how it's treated. Well, the rest maybe if, if, you, if it's Friday, and you've already brought one story to the show. <laughs> Sc- yeah, we got the Scandal is right. next. Sky, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. Wherever you are right at this minute, I want you to put your hands apart from each other, and then I want you to clap with them. Hall mighty pucky pucky. And the reason we're clapping, an enthusiastic clap, please. Come on. Yeah. The reason we're clapping after a really, really long time of being single, our very own Clint Roberts, after about a year of spading, Woo! has got a girlfriend! Oh, wow. Hey! This is great news. She's one of my friends. That was a nationwide announcement. She is one of my friends. She's one of the most beautiful people <laughs> ever. And he has really put in the hard yards. So we <laughs> want to talk next about how long you've spaded someone for until they finally <laughs> became your girlfriend. Because, Clint, I, I can tell you, he's been chipping away at this for a very long time. Congrats, Clint. This is what's good about being friends with Sharon. <laughs> We're going to talk it about this. It comes out on the radio. It's We're a bit th- awkward that she's brought this up, but I love it anyway. Well done, Clint. We're going to talk about well it. Well done. This is broods. Can't wait to talk about it some more.
I'll take the applause, though. Would you say that was the theme song to your life right now? <laughs> Clip along if you feel like Clint, Clint is a happy dude. <laughs> you're, pretty, you're pretty happy because... I'm chipper. Clint has been single for a while now, oh. and um, he went You made me sound like such a loser, by the way. No. You're a bit of a loser. No, no, no. <laughs> you, you used to have a really nice girlfriend. You guys broke up. You were down about it for a while, and then you were single for a while after that, and now... She you, blows all my cover. You've got, honestly, the... The, not to say that's because she's one of my good friends, but she is honestly one of the most perfect girls you'd ever meet. She is absolutely stunning, and she's a really nice person at the same time. And I don't know how, but after how many she's months? She's great. Yeah. How many she's months? A, she's an absolute. She's an absolute legend. Around the office, people have been talking to. I haven't <laughs> seen her yet, but like Leon, our boss. Is like you should see a guy. She's stunning, and yeah. then like just random men <laughs> from like Radio Live Sport will pop their head in the office and go, "I think she's beautiful." <laughs> it's, a- it's actually true. Coo who reads the news in the morning was like, "She's great." <laughs> My husband's friends, who are mostly all married, uh, when I said that, that Clint's girlfriend was no longer single, they were like, "Who is he?" They want to know everything about his girlfriend because they all just want the best for this girl because they just all just think she's so amazing. And <laughs> plus, let's be honest, how long have you been? Are we allowed to say her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Lucy is her name. Yeah. How long Ooh. have you been spading Lucy for? And oh, by spading, yeah, I, I mean like putting the work in to finally get her to agree to go on a date with you, you and be your girlfriend. You don't mean stopping a cat from having children. No, that's, I that's don't spaying. mean that. That's spaying your thinking Same of. thing in my stupid brain, mate. How, how long was it until you finally got her to be your girlfriend? <laughs> probably, about a, probably about a year's work. Oh, a year. That's so romantic. A year. And he's been, like, he went on a trip to Europe and we were all like, oh, did you get a pash while you were away? Because he was secretly spading uh, Lucy the whole time. Didn't get one pash. He's been a really, really good boy. He's just honestly been... He, he looks really embarrassed I now. don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. He has just honestly been... Working so hard but, on this for so let's, long. Let's just let's just put this in context. Like, <laughs> you could say something nice about me too. You could say, "Oh, she's got a real catch." No, too. mate, you're definitely betting way <laughs> above your weight. The only per- the only guy that would be good enough for Lucy is Ryan Gosling. Wow. And you're really you really high uh, praise. Don't get nervous about it, mate. I think Clint's a Clint's a catch, and I'm jealous that he's got a girlfriend. Clint, can I um, borrow your girlfriend sometime? <laughs> <laughs> Not even <laughs> like, take her to the movies or something. Don't, I get lonely sometimes. But it has been a year. That has got to be the longest that anyone has ever ever spaded somebody. It's a record. For. It's a record. It yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really long time. No, no, it's time. not. It's not. I guarantee you it's not a record. So we want I don't reckon anyone would have spent that, mu- that much time spading someone. We want to know from the people of New Zealand, from the people at home, from you, what? how long have you spaded someone for? Not <laughs> spaded a cat, <laughs> spaded a, a human being. How, how much effort did you put in? Is that what you're asking? Just yeah. how long did it take until you finally convinced them? We have got some girls on the phone that have rung through on 0800 The Edge. Tina, how long was it for you? Um, my husband spaded me for about three or four years. So this is before you you would even let him like. T- I had met him. Yeah. At school, at high school, yeah. and I was going out with another guy. Yeah. Oh, so he sure shamed and, you. And <laughs> well, like he he we met at the dentist, and I wanted to hook him up with another person. <laughs> I wanted to hook him up with a friend of mine, and then um. We ended up being really good friends, and I found out a couple months later from one of his friends that he liked me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I just want to be friends. And sort of he waited around until we broke up, which was three years later. Did he instigate the breakup? <laughs> no. <laughs> Did he buy a SIM no. card, pretend to be you, and text the dude and go, it's <laughs> over? <laughs> Pardon, I didn't hear that last no. time, sorry. Three or four years, that's a decent amount of time. But in the end, you, like Guy said, you relented and gave up and said, oh, all right then, mate, you're in. Well, you're not getting any well, younger. You're just going to take what you can get, right? <laughs> and, yeah, I, well, I think he's a really good guy. And he was he was there for me when we broke up. I mean, I, I rang him as the first person I rang after I broke up with so this, this guy. this and, is an example of a dude who's effectively made it out of the friend zone. Wow. Yeah, he did. Wow. He, he really did. Yeah, it, is quite, it does happen. Thank you so much, Tina. Thanks for calling. And just so we're clear, when we're saying spading, we just been hitting on. We don't mean like till you finally hooked up with them. We mean until you make them your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Just, gro- to, just groundwork. To yeah, all, to just all, the groundwork. To all my girlfriends who are listening, um, I'm trying to get out of the friend zone. So if you're listening, just <laughs> make that formal. All right, continue. Nicola, how long was it for you? Uh, about 10 years. 10, Whoa, ten years. years. Yeah. How, how come it took you so long, Nicola? Um, I will... 
we sort of always had a bit of a thing for each other, but we just never really got round to it. It was always just bad timing. And okay. Then, yeah, a couple of months ago, we finally just got together. How did you get together? Uh, well, we were in a show together, and we played the leads opposite each other. Oh! And sort of happened from there. What show? Uh, Grace. Grace. Grace, oh, perfect. <laughs> so I would just like to call you Denny. Yeah, he was my Danny. I would just like to point out that high pitch squeal did not come from me, and that came from Guy. That was from me, <laughs> and I'm, I'm really glad it was something romantic like Grease, and not some like real heavy play like um, Death of a Salesman but, or something like that. Like Romeo cru- and Juliet, no, The yeah, Crucible. <laughs> oh, Nicola, that is a really cute story. Thank you so much for calling through. And Sasha, not Let's... quite as long as Nicola, but how long did your husband spay you for? Uh, it would have been like at least eight years. Maybe longer. See, that's almost a decade, both of you. Was there one thing in particular, Sasha, that made you fully see your husband in a different way and that he could be your future partner? Um, he should stop trying. <laughs> that is yeah. Exactly, that's how I got my husband. I was like a puppy for ages, and I was like, stuff it. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to get some <laughs> new clothes, and I'm just not going to care about you. And then he got this. Oh, the ultimate prize. Was he, was he ready for all this jelly? Oh. <laughs> Pardon? Hey. Oh, no, nothing. Carry on. He was referencing a Beyonce song, and Sharon just, got really offended. It came out me just cool. I didn't mean just to Just because I put on 18 kg since we got <laughs> no, married. No, no, jelly's a not mean yeah. that I'm um, jelly. Beyonce's got jelly. Everyone loves Beyonce's jelly. <laughs> Let's go to the text machine. My fiancé and I were, were about two years. Him and I worked together, and I was his boss. Ooh. I've been after a girl for nearly two and a half years. We've been best friends and all that, but every time we get close and things look up, another guy comes along for a bit. Damn him. So he's still he's still going. He's still chipping away. A year, a year, only to be tossed aside so he could get back with his ex. Five minutes, I'm such a naughty horn dog. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably from Chang. <laughs> yeah, it was most definitely not from Chang. Oh, Chang's she's... entire life is a sure shank spade. <laughs> Aww. I'm gl- oh, no, wait. Me and nice. Chang, me and Chang are going out on the prowl tonight. Me and Chang are both unlucky in love, but tonight we're going to turn it around, mate. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. At five o'clock, the news will be coming up. Um, our news will read us away today. Um, can I read the news? Why is there such a long pause? I'm asking you. Can I read the news? Um, it would be better if you just let Sharon do it. Okay. <laughs> you can do it if you, I mean, if you want to. Do I've it. got my own. I've got my own story here right now. A forty thousand okay. dollar bargain house. <laughs> In Taranaki, some of you might be interested in this. Yeah. Well, this is the first of all. You can't read the news because the news is supposed to be the most recent news. The house is uh, forty thousand dollars, but wait, that sounds like a bargain. There's a catch. The house is next to a Black Power gang pad. Oh, okay. So would you guys buy a house next to a Black Power gang pad? There is that old uh, saying that the the safest, and this is going to sound really stupid, but the safest place to live is next to a gang like that because they're always. <laughs> Oh, that always, is stupid. Is no, that, that old saying. <laughs> where I used to live, there were a few gang pads, and they used to say that you were safer living next door than the suburb over because they look after their neighbours. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's that old don't don't sh- where you live kind of thing, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it was actually true for uh, where my mum used to work uh-huh. across the road from a, an old gang pad, and someone tried to break into their work once, and the boys all come over and they're like, "Get away from our neighbours." <laughs> okay, so that's a pro. Con- cons of living next to a gang house could explode from methamphetamine. <laughs> May be involved in some sort of gang shootout at some stage. Hey, where are you guys living? New York? Loud parties and possible stabbing, stabbing next door. Um, so the Black Power spokesman, Napari Nui, says he could understand why being next to a Black Power gang pad might put people off. He said it would be a bit hard. They've got to feel comfortable. Some people hate us and some people like us. Who likes you? <laughs> Who's like a supporter of the gang? Sharon, by the sounds of it. Oh, no. Oh, I've, I've, well, obviously, I know they've done some bad stuff, but I also, when I was younger, one of my friend's dad was the head of one of the <laughs> head of the biggest gang there, and um, my mum didn't even realise and thought he was the nicest person ever, and I was like, did you not look at his neck, mum? But so, he, he was always super nice to me, so I... Don't want to judge you know, where I know I went, someone. I went to school with a girl whose dad was the head of, I think it was maybe one of them, Mungle Mog Black Power, some, some gang, and th- their main deal was to get um, to remove the P from Muda Putter. Mm. Um, and do you know do you know how they went about it? Do you know how they headed up the campaign? How? They went and scraped off the P on the Welcome to Muda Putter sign, <laughs> so it said, Welcome to Muda Utter. 
So, and, and if they were actually trying to remove the pee, it would just be because the, whatever drug they're pushing could get into the market. Well, a lot, of, a lot of those, if you watch the documentaries that have been around, a lot of them are drug free now. This is, there's still a lot of them that aren't, but there's a lot of uh, drug, a lot of gangs that aren't selling drugs anymore. I can't figure out why. If the gang pad's right there and everyone knows where it is, why don't the police just go and arrest them? <laughs> the criminals are right there. They've got a pad and a sign outside that says, this is where we are. Go and catch them. This is the chance. Um, this is... Um, I this know nothing about gangs. No, I was gonna, yeah, I was just going to say, I was like, this is the, also the pad I'm thinking of doesn't have a sign. This is the most <laughs> underinformed gang conversation. Yeah. When, I, when, <laughs> when I was growing up in Nelson, I thought Grey Power was a gang. Turns out it's just the place where old people get together. <laughs> it's oh Nelson's God. biggest gang. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so is it, it's in Taranaki, $40,000. It's a bargain for a house. Yeah, so it, it's an advertisement. If anyone's in Taranaki looking to buy a property, this one costs $40,000, just a small cash. Why don't they go and buy that house? Like, Why, why don't Black Power buy oh, that house? Oh, good chance for expansion. And yeah. they could just have a bigger frat That's house. a great business plan. Drive the prices down, buy up the neighbourhood. But then the, once they buy the house next door to it, then the house... Next to the house next door goes down in value. <laughs> it's the property market. It's, it's, it's the problem facing the property market these days. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. And Chang Lang. Hey, Chang. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today, well, yesterday we set you the challenge of, um, uh, we, we wrote a love letter for you for the girl who you've got a crush on. Who is the girl that you've got the crush on? Colby Calais. New song, Hold On. I think it's all about me holding on. Holding on, on to, uh, yeah. <laughs> holding on to what? Holding on, stalking, not knowing you exist. Clutching yep. at straws. Same thing. <laughs> Jane, do you have ADD? Because every time you're in here, you're like <laughs> looking through, like right now you're flicking through a clear file. Yesterday, when we were doing an interview with you, you were um, reading an easy bike catalog. <laughs> Pot calling the kettle black. You always have to be doing something. <laughs> but look at us, Jane. We're talking to you. Okay, yeah. Go on. Okay. So today we, we had this phone call with Colby Calais. We recorded the, you read her the love letter that the listeners helped us write yesterday. Yes, very nervous. Very nervous? <laughs> you were nervous to do it? Yeah, very nervous. Because you do genuinely have a crush on her, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. How would you think it went today, Chang? Well, you, I think you'll hear the interview and you'll see how it went. Well, yeah, how, how do you feel about it? Yeah. I think it went okay. Really? Mm. Oh, that's all the audio <laughs> suggests. Yeah, I, I would say that you have just as much luck down the phone as you do in real life with girls. Oh, Ooh. zing. You don't be saying that when me and Chang are tearing up town tonight. <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, when you make up with each other. Yeah, boy. Chang. Okay. Chang. Yeah. <laughs> when I go for a high five, mate, oh, you've you <laughs> got a high five in the back of those. It's real awkward. You, you might have helped us write this love letter yesterday. If you did, your line will be in here. This is our interview with Colby Calais and Chang's attempt at wooing her. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on the phone line all the way from... Camarillo, California, the wonderful Kobe, Kobe Calais! Uh, Guy Williams here from Nelson. Uh, first question, what's your favourite cheese? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not Kobe, if you'd believe that. Oh, I didn't uh, even think of that. What a terrible joke. Yeah, sorry about that, Kobe. <laughs> sorry, sorry for Guy. <laughs> Now, Colby, I hate to ask personal questions, but are you still dating Gavin DeGraw? Um, me and Gavin were never dating. We just have uh, our songs together, which we're actually nominated for, for the Grammy. So the rumour that you guys were secretly dating for, like, two years is not true? Whoa, I had no idea that that was a rumour. Yeah, there was a rumour that you guys were secretly dating for two years. Wow. Dating. Dating, doing a song together, it's all the same here on the edge. We just take it. <laughs> well, this is great news because we need to introduce you to somebody that you may have met last time you were in New Zealand. He works for our radio station and his name is Chang. Um, Chang, say hello to Colby. Hello, Colby. Hello. How are you? I'm really good. It's a beautiful, sunny day where I'm, where I'm living. Got to yeah. say, loving the new song, Hold On. Oh, I'm so glad. You know, I was I, I was honestly scared. I didn't know what people were going to think. So I really appreciate the, the nice feedback. And a very, very, very hot music video. Okay, getting weird. Okay, you make Getting it weird. weird. <laughs> now, Colby, Chang has actually got this really creepy um, kind of crush on you. And when you were in New Zealand last time, he was actually removed from your performance because he wouldn't stop asking you for photos. He got four different photos with you. And, um, wow. So, hogging, hogging people's time. <laughs> pretty much. But he's <laughs> he's written a love letter for you. And do you mind if he reads this love letter for you? I would love to hear it. Okay, here we go. Good luck, Chang. Are you ready, Chang? Yep. Okay. Dear, sweet, beautiful Kobe, your scent still lingers in my dream. You have such beautiful <laughs> oh, hair, I would love to taste it. 
I feel whole when I watch you sleep. You make me feel complete. Your eyes sparkle like Mountain Dew. My heart beats like a petrified mouse at the mention of your name. I already know what our kids would look like, cause I cut out a picture of your eyes and put them on a doll. So Dobby 3.1, more like Kobe, 3.0 sexy. Would you be my girlfriend? Love Chang. P.S. I still have your hairbrush. Well, you know, I'm very flattered, but um, I think my boyfriend would be really sad if Aww. I broke up. With him. <laughs> You're in the friend zone again, Chang. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Oh. Friends, that's a good place to be. We hope to see you in New Zealand sometime soon. Enjoy the Grammys on Monday, and we'll talk to you very soon, Colby. Awesome. Really nice talking to you guys. See you you too. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Colby Collins! <laughs> There you go. ching lang Sorry, mate. Not awkward at all. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, Sharon and Clint on The Edge. The Edge. Oh. This Titanium has come on home. They're playing at Parachute this weekend down at Mystery Creek in Hamilton. Did you know that Titanium got their own iPhone app today? Did they? Yeah, there's a Titanium iPhone app. You can play Titanium games. I'm not, I'm not joking. <laughs> it seems like a joke. <laughs> it's, it's the truth. <laughs> Why don't they... <laughs> <laughs> Why do they spend less time uh, <laughs> designing computer applications and more time making good music? <laughs> you are one to Maybe talk, mate. One song, you are one you to talk much. from your glass house over there. We're just yeah. about to launch into a conversation. Shit, lay off the boys. Your failed attempt at a radio promotion. <laughs> yeah, if you work at the edge, you've got to like Titanium. It's in the rules. Yeah. Things aren't going well for me, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> someone just texts in going, Guy, you should choose an Aussie radio station to work at. And I was like, oh, that's a nice call. And then boom, they hit you with the other direction. So we can't hear you. <laughs> and they've spelt hear you, they've spelt hair the wrong type of hair. So it really, they've got to spell like hair like hair on your head. Anyway, stop <laughs> distracting from the fact that you're upset. Why are you sad? Have we got Ooh. some sad sack music we can play for him or something? No. I had an idea for. <laughs> no. <laughs> We've it's got a actually, violin party. It's actually so bleak. I, at you the start of the year, I, at the start of the week, I came out with a, um, a promotion. The sensation to sweep the nation. <laughs> the sensation to shit on the nation. And uh, it was catching a hat. It was a dream that I had to sabotage the two we catch a million with an actual million dollar prize. You were going to hold up a, a hat and catch. <laughs> so I would laugh at it because it was something I genuinely tried. I've gotten so much hate for it. My favourite part about this is that just two minutes ago you were like, Tony, you've just spent less time making a computer at and more time on their music. So what's you just spent less time on this shit idea and more time on being better at life. So what's happened today is guys come to us and he's kind of said he's kind of said without without saying the words, I get the feeling that you want to pull out of your own promotion, catching a hat. I feel like catching a hat is dead. The dream is over. But the thing is, is that our boss Leon loves catching a hat. So if you're going to pull out. You're going to have to tell Leon. No, I don't want to do that. You're going to have to tell Leon. He won't even notice it's gone. Can you call Leon now? Okay, Please I'm, don't I'm calling call Leon, Leon now. Oh, I'm going to call him. It's week. He's on holiday. Hello? Oh, oh, sorry. Leon, nice to talk to you. Thanks thanks so much for picking up, mate. I just wanted to call and just say thank you for a, a great first week working at the Edge Radio Station. I've had a lovely time. Sure. Have you really? Are I, you sure? I, I, I genuinely have. I, have I do apologise for the two people we have to work with. The, hey, hey, no problem. They've been absolutely lovely, and Chang has been mwah, on the top of his game. Really? Yeah, he is a master of the comedic arts. I love him the best. <laughs> mm, okay, the, re- right. the reason I'm calling is because one of my segments isn't going so well. I, I don't know if you remember um, the brainstorming session for Catching a Hat. Yep, I remember that one. It was the sensation sweep in the nation. <laughs> yep. And you were 100% behind us? Absolutely. Done right. Yeah, well, the problem is it's not... Did you get the million dollars? It's No, I haven't got the million dollars. I tried Kim.com. I tried, uh, I tried, well, that was the main thing I tried, actually. We tried to get Chang to the casino, but then let him in because he's wearing a lion costume. Yeah. So it's been, to be honest, an absolute balls up. Right. So, uh, basically, what's happened now is... You're dropping it, are you? I'm getting a, I'm getting a a barrage of hate. (laughs) So, someone's written into the radio station and said, catch in a hat, more like shit in a hat. <laughs> right. Am I allowed to say shit in a hat on, on, on the air? Not necessarily, but you've so we'll let it slide. <laughs> 
So I'm guessing, Leon, I'm just wondering if you've got any ideas in terms of um, re- rejuvenating Catch and Hat. Cause you really need to find the million bucks. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the only way out now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to have to otherwise, get... Otherwise, you know, you're just going to have to drop and go on so, to something else. So, well, you're obviously my employer and you're the, the richest person I know, so could I possibly <laughs> borrow some money from you? No, I've got nothing. I, I don't believe you. No, I'll spend it all this summer. Please. Just, Please. Kids are taking it all out of me. I've got nothing left, mate, so you're going to have to do it on your own. You can't You can't expect to come to me and get it. Well, uh, I've got no other ideas. Well, you better come up with some. That's what I've hired you for. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Leon. And can I just say again, what a great job you're doing with this radio station. It really is no superb. Worries, mate. Thanks. Sorry for calling you on your holiday. See you, guy. See you later, Leon. Bye. See you, mate. Bye. Oh. <laughs> Why are you guys laughing so much? Because we've worked with Leon for eight years and he hates your guts. Listen to that phone call. He just sounds so angry. He sounds quite angry. I'm going to lose my job in my first week. <laughs> I don't, I don't. He's hoping. I wonder if Ben Hurley's oh, busy. I don't, I don't believe the dream is dead, though, for catching a hat. <laughs> <laughs> it could be Well, though. one person on the text machine likes it. Guy Sharon and Clint. Itch. There you go. That is the um, podcast finished for the day. What Thank a you blast for that us. was. <laughs> it was something for sure. I um, I really enjoyed listening to it. And uh, could I just say that if anyone's out there who wants to be our friend on Facebook or um, f- be our friend on Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat or Bevo or MySpace, then go and do that now because we, we are very desperate for your love. <laughs> And don't forget to rate us on the comment section below. And, and on the iTunes Music Store. Thank you so much for listening. We realise we didn't do a win beneath your wings on the uh, podcast, which a lot of people are disappointed about, obviously. So I'm going to do one right now. <sighs> when you're going for a jog and you get lost, sometimes it's a good thing. Thank you all for listening to that. Wow, what a shitty thing. <laughs> I thought that was quite good. That was inspirational. You made that up, but that was kind of I was looking at some joggers out the window, correct, mm. but it was quite good. See you guys. The Guys Sharon and Clint Podcast. <laughs>